I'm Nigerian Canadian. I was born in Nigeria, came to Canada when I was five, grew up in Gatineau, and now I'm living in Ottawa. Um, I wear a lot of different hats, so I'm learning not so much to identify with particular titles, but instead kind of just look at the things I do. So I have a visual arts practice. I create a visual art pieces, installation art. I have curated a show, so that's something that I, I like to think of myself taking on a little bit more in the future. I also work in policy um, with the federal government, so I work at Employment and Social Development Canada on issues around social finance finance and social innovation. I arrived at five in 1998. I don't have that many memories from uh, when I first arrived, but I know that growing up in Gatineau, learning a new language was kind of challenging initially. Um, and then I think as a result of that, I, I definitely turned to art a lot more as a way of expressing myself. And that's where that kind of desire to use different kinds of, of um, visual as well as different kinds of written forms to express myself in ways I couldn't uh, verbally at times. Uh, I think it was probably difficult, but um, it, it's interesting going back to some of those memories now with uh, with a little bit more hindsight and a bit more understandings of the ways in which some of these issues that are actually systemic and structural in nature come to be internalized and become micro in a way. Um, and oftentimes when you're young and you don't know what to do with these feelings, um, you, you, you internalize them. And for me, that led to a lot of internalized racism um so racism wasn't so much uh, overt as it was covert and just uh really definitely informed by this lack of representation um around myself i had i have a very loving family that is very proudly nigerian so i'm very lucky in that sense but outside of the home setting it was difficult so i think that kind of shaped there's been a lot of different evolutions in my art practice and when it first evolved and when it first started it really was about crafting different narratives and representations of black womanhood and from there it's kind of started to interrogate that process of racialization and what it means to come from somewhere like Nigeria where blackness and race is not the, uh, an issue in the same extent that it is when you're in Gatineau, Quebec. So what does it mean to become a racialized person? What does it mean to become black in a sense? Um, has been the next kind of quest line of questioning that I've been engaging in with my art practice. Ooh, biggest changes in the city. Uh, that's a hard one. I feel as though I, I did go to school in Montreal. I did my undergraduate studies there. So when I left Ottawa Gatineau, I was a high school teenager basically. When I came back, I was in my mid 20s. And I feel as though one of the things that's changed the most in the city is just the art scene. I'm, I consider myself again to be very lucky um, to be part of this growing and burgeoning art scene in the city. City. It is small in, in a way, but I think it's just so there's a lot of creativity and there's a lot of desire to come together to build something that's going to be better and more inclusive and so on. So definitely that's something I'm, I'm very happy about. And I think that Ottawa has so much to offer and, and at times isn't necessarily always recognized for that. But I think that is something that's going to change the future. There's the new Ottawa Art Gallery that's made a huge difference. Um, um, I've, work, I've worked with a lot of different art organizations, I uh, had a show at Axe Neo set in Gatineau, so I, there's so many different pockets and so, so many people who are so passionate about making this making into this city into a creative powerhouse, um, so that's something I'm very proud about. It's never been something that all I want to do in life. I think I've always been someone who um, needs a lot of stimulation. So that's why I have like my art practice on one end and I, I have my work in policy on another. I, I struggle at times with thinking of myself as just an artist or having a, a full-time art practice. I think I've always gravitated to it, as I mentioned before, with the language and all of that. And then when I started to think my, of myself more fully as an artist, was likely in my first year of undergraduate studies um, when I I think 
first year can be very challenging for certain people. It was challenging for me. And I needed something that would bring me back to myself and help me kind of situate myself and understand myself a little bit better. And that ended up being art. So that's where I created a, um, a Facebook page for myself, started sharing my works, started exhibiting my works as well. And from there, I kind of just snowballed into what is now a, a career. Um, but there's always been that kind of tension between that one part of myself that I'm very passionate about and then the other side that I'm also equally passionate about that is actually my full-time job so yeah so I've been in policy since I was in school um so I started off just um part well during the summer and then part-time as a student and then started full-time as soon as I graduated so I work as a policy analyst and oftentimes when I talk to my art friends about that they're like what exactly does that mean and then I struggle to explain the kinds of things that we do um but I, I've worked in different areas of policy and for me it's very interesting to delve into to um, areas as, as, as um, wide ranging as green transportation when I was at agriculture, to biodiversity also at agriculture, um, food policy, so food related issues, particularly food security, and now working on social finance. I, I find working in policy very challenging, especially when you're going, you're working on these kinds of issues. And I think one of the things I'm trying to um, to kind of follow through throughout um, these different uh, these different files and these different like work opportunities is this emphasis on social equity and how can we think about rethinking the the policy design process and making sure that it's more inclusive, making sure that we're innovating in ways that um, account for different considerations as it relates to how racism functions within our society, um, ableism, and so on. How can we start to take all of these things together and think through these structural inequities. Uh, so that's something I'm hoping to always bring into my work and I think working in government. Um, I'm extremely proud to be a public servant because I think that my work is all about um, providing additional supports and additional services to Canadians and how can we better serve um, Canadians, especially those who are most marginalized. Um, I'm still trying to figure that out. One of the things I've been trying to better understand myself is the ways in which my art practice informs my work in policy and the way in which my work in policy informs my art practice. I feel as though as an artist, I'm very kind of organized, kind of like I have a research focus and it's very logical the way in which I approach my art practice, which some artists have kind of kind of see as odd or kind of like interesting. Um, and then with my, my work in policy, I think there there's so much value in the way that artists think in terms of um, really thinking outside the box and, and being very critical. Artists are very critical and are able to t uh, look at things from very different art angles. And I think that's something that I hope I can bring into my work. And I, I say this a lot to my colleagues in, in government, like I wish there were more artists in, in policy or in government. And I knew, know quite a few people actually who are artists working in policy. And that includes people working at the Canada Council for the Arts, but also in other departments. And I just think that there's skill sets there that we can better leverage or kind of highlight a bit more. I think there is a capacity for storytelling, there is a, cap a capacity for critical thinking um, and so on that, that artists really do bring. So I, I government is interesting because it's it's a huge institution right so there's the bureaucracies and so on and um I'm, I'm learning and i've had to learn how to navigate those of course but i think also i'm going to be going back to school very soon and i think it's going to be a good break from you know after right after school i went back to i started working full-time and even though like i'm still relatively young like i've been in government for for five years now so i think being able to step out of that and get some new perspectives 
experiences and then come back reinvigorated with new knowledge as well as new connections and new ways of thinking. I'm really excited about that. I think there is a desire within government for new ways of working. And I think government has shown a, a tremendous capacity to be agile and very quickly responsive in in light of the pandemic. So I think there's, there's also like within government, so many amazing people who are doing such amazing work to make things different. Um, but it's still a huge institution. So the, the challenges are immense, um, but I'm hoping to be part of that change. And I know that there's so many amazing people within government also pushing for the same thing. I think for me with art, it's increasingly like you can make it very conceptual. So I can tell you that like I'm really interested in phenomenology as like the philosophy around experience, right? And I can talk to you about all these different like philosophers and how my art practice is aligned with that and how that can be a methodology and so on. Um, but I can also just tell you that art is about experience and art allows you to tap into something within yourself and start to kind of break down all these barriers and kind of, or even not, not necessarily break down, but allows us to see the things or experience the things that that are sometimes invisible so that's what a lot of my art what I focus on right now is making um playing with perspective and using creating these kind of uh, interactive environments where people are able to see the ways in which they're complicit in the development of of these kinds of uh, broader structures so if for example um, some of my pieces have had to do with the way with the process of racialization and that's a process whereby someone in their perception of you assumes that um, that assumes certain things about race are actually just naturalized. So black people are naturally this, 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 and there are all these biases that are automatically projected onto you as soon as someone sees you. How do we then start to break that process into pieces and make it make it clear that this is not a natural process, that all of these biases are really rooted in these historical uh, processes, these social uh, historical processes. And that is not objective, right? Like vision and perception, they're not objective things. They are um, by nature of the way in which we even perceive reality, the way in which we experience reality, they 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 trigger these, um, these even reactions within your body. So uh, oftentimes I, I create these, um, these exhibitions that are actually quite uncomfortable for people. They don't know what they're supposed to do. They don't know how they're supposed to feel. And it's me, for me, it's that moment, that hesitation, that's really generative because so often and we go through life and we don't question anything. We take so many things for granted. We, we think that this is just the way things are. So how can we pause? How can we force someone to pause and to question and to kind of see that in reality, there's so many different forces operating, whereas right now you see nothing. I think one of the things I think about a lot, not only in my art practice, but also in my work is how can we better appreciate and recognize and value vulnerability. I think artists are incredibly powerful in that they, they, they take something so personal and they have the courage to put that out there and then to let it just be it's something that can speak to other people and other people's interpretations are just as valid. Like that takes, I find my, my art practice very challenging at times because it is very hard on someone to, especially if your work is around things like race or around identity and that's what it has been around for me for a while. I, I might be moving away from that at some point. Um, it's very difficult because you take your, I take myself as, as my muse and I have to go back to these experiences and I have to kind of like delve into all of that. And then I create something that's so personal and I have to let go of it and I have to put it out into the, the public and I have to be okay with how people will perceive it. And that's not easy. That's extremely difficult. And I'm, I'm trying to think about how I can bring that same vulnerability to work and for me it's been an openness in the kinds of conversations and openness in the ways in which like I'm clearly thinking always about marginalized groups and how we can do better and I think it's important to, to be very clear about that and to be very clear about how things are not working for certain people um, and sometimes I, I struggle with that and sometimes I 
I need to, I need I'm trying to learn how to speak up more as well and like to to really take that on and and do that work because I think it's really important but also be able to have those very um the, the conversations that come with that you know um so yeah a lot a lot i think over the last couple of weeks with the lockdown i've been spending a lot of time reading about mindfulness about buddhism about like a lot of different things and um i'm learning to approach who i am in a very different way i'm trying to think about i'm trying to be comfortable with doing nothing and i think this pandemic has been a great opportunity to learn how to be comfortable with just being yourself just being um, so that's been really great. So I, I feel as though I've learned a lot about myself in that period, but also when you're able to tap into that, when you're able to kind of just like experience, your, experience yourself as you are, it makes it easier to experience others as they are and not to project onto them and to kind of understand that we're all going through the same thing um, in different ways. And I think, again, the pandemic has been um, a huge kind of, you know, everyone's being impacted in very different ways and there there are structural inequities that have been exacerbated and people are are so severely affected by this and I don't want to minimize that but one of the things that I found really interesting as I was reading through some of these Buddhist concepts is this Buddhist concept of Tonglen where in it's a kind of practice where and you breathe in all of the kind of negative thoughts um, and then you breathe out like all pos- positivity and it's essentially asking that you actually embrace suffering and you take that on as a way of providing relief to others and kind of understanding that everyone is going through something and basically that pain and that suffering is what allows you to connect with others and it it, it helps you develop that kinship and then from there all you wish is the best for others so it it develops that that compassion and i think this moment is one in which we can we really see that kind of um you can start to to really understand what that means and what that can actually lead to in terms of understanding that we are all impacted and we all have a responsibility to do something I probably would have taken a break after university and gone to travel <laughs> for a little while instead of going straight to work. I think it, it, it's been good, um, but I also, I think I'll, I'll start traveling now, but having that experience of different places and yeah, I think that would have been something that would have added to, to whatever experiences I then accumulated later. I think oftentimes we, like even in terms of my career progression, I've had conversations with with colleagues and um, every time I say like I'm ambitious and so on, they ask me, but why? Like, why is that important? Like, what are you trying to achieve? So it always, it was always that question of like, what are your intentions? Like, if your goal is to be this by whatever, like what what's actually driving that and what do you hope to achieve really? So what I've been trying to, um, to do as a blade is always be clear in, in the intention beha- behind my actions and know why it is exactly that I'm doing what I'm doing because if not it's very possible that you're being driven by ego right and you're not actually driving for something that's going to lead to the betterment of others so I think definitely if I I wish I'd done that kind of exercise earlier on in my in my youth and career and so on but I now I'm confident um off most of the time in my intentions all all the time let's say because I do try and be very critical of why I'm doing what I'm doing and I'm able to confidently state that my intentions are are good and I am doing this for the right reasons um storytelling i love storytelling there was a uh, one one of my pieces um from last year from 2019 was based on um west african storytelling so the story of anansi which i know became uh, aunt nancy the spider in jamaica i believe but it's it's in the caribbean there as well i think storytelling especially when you think about the, like the african continent and the diaspora is such an amazing thing to see the way in which we've held on to that and it's kind of evolved and so on but it's beautiful and the ways in which it was used to also communicate resistance and resilience um 
during the times of slavery was is also really important and the the relevance now is always um i think storytelling and that capacity to take yeah take stories to, to really communicate a, a deeper meaning um, that lasts through the 